Welcome to Mick and the Psychic, where we leave no stone unturned as we explore all things outside the apparent physical realm. There is no intent to teach or make you believe or disbelieve anything. It is just a safe space to listen and explore with us. So for this next episode, you have permission to open your heart and mind as you join myself and Xavier on this deep dive into the unknown. But on the spiritual level, these guys are just so connected yeah and they and what i see sometimes i i will do i've learned mindfulness and then i'll do mindfulness and grounding with them because a lot yeah a lot of them are like heart up and out but not third chakra or grounded so today on the show we have quite an inspiring guest with us that seems Thank has you. a really important calling and message in her life so <laughs> Chris spicer is an author of the book Childhood Autism Insights into Their Mysterious World. Mm-hmm. Chris is a body talk access practitioner and teacher, a crystal healing and Reiki practitioner and teacher. Chris also runs workshops on how to handle stress and anxiety in children and for adults as well. Mm-hmm. And Chris mm-hmm. specializes working with children with autism and developmental mm-hmm. disabilities. Chris, mm-hmm. welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. And Chris yes. is like- <laughs> This is such a pretty name. I haven't heard that one before. I love unique names. Thank you. Spelling like I do for my name. Like my my kids are weird and wacky names too. Um, But that's gorgeous. Where does Cress come from? My full name's Cressida. Cressida, of course. Yeah, like Troy is Cressida, like Chase, but I just, no one can ever pronounce my full name. So I just much rather keep it as Cress. Cress, I think of Watercress. Watercress, this is pretty. Beautiful. So <laughs> Thank working, you. working with children with um with autism and mm-hmm. the understanding, you have a spiritual connection to that too. I would love yeah. to know yeah. what, how did that start? We've got to start there. How, where did it come from? What yeah. you helping uh, and connecting with children with autism and more? Mm-hmm. I think, gosh, when did it start? I've always being aware of energy since a child like I could see energy my dad was very psychic too and then even as a child I I saw like beings in the bedroom and things so I think that's yeah like I'd see um like Jesus when I was a child and Mary and a whole bunch of other people in there and then what happened after that is like I as I I think I always became very aware of energy Mm-hmm. but um I could see everything I could hear it I could see it I could feel it I get all the five senses and then I started working with children and children are like really open to mm-hmm. energy and things and then I became like um I studied nursery nursing in England and then because I have a passion working with children and then once I studied that I went to like Toronto and New York and then to Vancouver and I started working with children with special needs. And then I realized that even though with all my training, I have and everything, I have the ECE and I have like sign language and all those things. Wow. But the, the, why, the way, what feels the best for me too is the communication on the energetic level. It's all about the energy for me, like, and their connection to the spirituality. So like years ago I was working in a school board here and one of the behavior consultants came up to me and said why is it when you're in the room everybody chills up and like even if they're having like meltdowns and things it's like they said that you're you come in I don't even need to talk to them right they just walk <laughs> in and they can picking up on the energy right yeah. and yeah so and I realized that I was working with even now I'm working with some of the uh children with quite severe behaviors and things and so I connect with them when I'm working with them um on an energy level and connecting to like the spiritual level and communicate because a lot of children are very very psychic like a lot of the children on the autism spectrum are very like um very open third eye very open in the heart and actually not very grounded (laughs) yeah exactly what I get with yeah I I don't work with children specifically in that area but that's what I've noticed is that they really just need grounding I yeah Yeah. my burning question which is why we want I wanted to interview you so much when I saw that this is your specialty um Mm -hmm. because I want to see if this is accurate from what I've been Mm -hmm. getting from all the children I've worked with and I've worked with some that are really high functioning um yeah that the label of autism it's it's a it's a label right mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. from what mm-hmm. i get is that they're just so tuned in yeah. they may yeah. not have had many lives here on earth some of them or they yeah. may just be so tuned in and not grounded 
having yeah. a hard time being in their bodies that that's why yeah. they have their behaviors that they do because they just got so much going on up here tuning yeah. in with all the messages and stuff that they're not grounded in, and it comes across yeah. as a problem yeah that's exactly what it is oh i got the chills what are you saying like, no, no just, i can't woo. talk to people about it right because no that's, one no i see nobody it. understands really thank you for clarifying can well, you yeah. talking that? to thousands yeah. now yeah now can you please if you can elaborate that on that in any way um because you know more than i do yes can please. i just yes. ask what are, what are you are you two are, are you two kind of alluding to potentially that um autism is like a symptom of a, like having a really high spiritual connection and lack of grounding yeah that's what i see it as yeah i see really? that too i see i I mean, they come up as like neurodivergent and whatever. They have differences in thinking. Uh -huh. And so we all do. I mean, yeah. that's what makes it so unique is that, right? Yeah. I know exactly. But on a spiritual level, those guys are just so connected. Yeah. And they and what I see sometimes, I will do, I've learned mindfulness and then I'll do mindfulness and grounding with them because a lot, yeah, a lot of them are like, heart up and out but not third chakra or grounded in here right. yeah and it, it's just like i think part of that is a safety thing too like this a lot of those guys are very high function high spiritual beings i see them too oh, like, so many just, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you know I mean? like they're very yeah. high spiritual beings i i really find it um like a blessing working with them connecting with them because it's like it's not just at the physical level. I mean, I'm supporting them on the academics and supporting with socials and on all the other levels, but it's also like the connection on the spiritual level and the energy level and the psychic level is so important with those guys. I, yeah, I don't know why. I've, I've never heard of it. Whenever anyone's talking about um, particularly things like autism or the people that are mm. on the spectrum, it's always about practical. Mm. It's always about practical. Like, yep. you know, someone has challenges in this area, so we've got to mm -hmm. come up with practical solutions so that, you know, mm -hmm. there's not too much noise or, or whatever the practical things so are. They can, be, never heard... they can fit in more as and into yeah. society. Yeah. 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 Like it's all yeah. important because we're here, mm -hmm. so we've got to be able to survive mm -hmm. here. We need to have the human but experience I'm... in the body, I guess. Yeah, exactly. We're going to make it easier yeah. for them as possible, but, yeah. But I've never heard of anyone talk about, um, I, I was a youth worker. Um, I oh. say in a past life, but I should say on this podcast, in my feels, current life yeah, a couple like of careers like, ago yeah, so, <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> um, but um i've never i've never heard of people really focus mm. on that because there is an energy thing right yeah. There is, yeah exactly right yeah and if you notice that and then now with all the way the dimensions of things are opening up and things are changing like the old ways of doing things don't work anymore mm -hmm. right and it's like I mean, I'm supporting in a school sometimes, too, and it's just like I'm support, like as an educational assistant as well. And I, I find that part of my job is being there, helping these children communicate and be, you know, on different levels. I mean, I'm providing like doing the physical aspects with them, too, and planning, helping them fulfill what they need to. But um, they it. It's not just the straightforward working anymore. You, there's a lot more to it, right? There's the energy connection. And I see them. I see their energy. I, I feel them. I connect with them on the heart level. And, and it's funny because they a lot of those guys have this um, very unconditional love too. Um, sometimes when they're sitting there, I'll just, they'll turn around to me and just connect with me heart to heart. And I'm just like, wow, right? And there's, like, they have this real unconditional love as well mm -hmm. she's you're so authentic when you said i see them I, you just you're just energy like i saw it in my mind's eye just your heart like you're wearing pink but it just went bigger it was just <laughs> very very genuine so you um that's just gorgeous because yeah seeing them thank you it's yeah. very important because i feel like i know we, we have um a gorgeous my gorgeous stepson he has adhd and he feels yeah. like he gets in trouble all the time because he's always getting told to sh like calm down. And, um, so um, learning some tips would be amazing because I know there's mm -hmm. so much more to him. And he's on medication because you know sometimes when you're in families where the parents are divorced, one family parent might think things want to do different things with them than the other. 
um mm -hmm. so love to teach him like so i love teaching him and try to help him grounding himself yeah so I'm glad that was a sort of something that was mm. you you um say you work with as yeah. well it's not so much yeah to help him be in his body um and we'd love him to be off the medication because he doesn't like taking it um yeah so how old you know, is he too he's 12 yeah, 12, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's a very little for a 12 year old too so he just doesn't like having to do things but he's interested in meditation but he knows he can't do it by himself he needs someone else to help him <laughs> so yeah. we don't get to see him full time so um, yeah so it's kind of like it can be tricky so yeah it can um, be tricky and if you've yeah. got tips of something you can do to help um, mm -hmm. if anyone's got children that might be a bit go 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 and would love mm -hmm. to learn how to center themselves and release mm -hmm. stuff or be more in their bodies i'd love to know mm -hmm. yeah i mean i find that um when I was working one school boards, I got trained up in like mind up mindfulness, which was working. I'd go into the grades and things and help like do grounding and mindfulness and things. And I really find that breathing techniques really help to calm the children and bring them back into the body. And even, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was doing some exercises with some children too. And just because right now, I mean, with all the lunar eclipses and the eclipses mm -hmm. and the full moon, everyone's yeah. everyone's out to see. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're more sensitive. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is great. I mean, I, I really love being the way I am, but it can it can like be overwhelming sometimes, right? When everyone's in yeah. the same space at the same time. And so yes, it's just yeah. like yeah. So what I find too is um like breathing in to the um the heart and then breathing into like I'll, I'll just ask them to put the hand in the heart and then mm. just breathing in and out and connecting to the heart energy. And also, um, as well as grounding, I imagine grounding cords going from like the soles of the feet into the center of the earth Beautiful. and then from the base of the spine into the center of the earth. So it's really anchoring them mm -hmm. and then just allowing that to um, connect to the center of the earth. And then sometimes I'll ask them to bring on like the earth energy up through Oh, yeah. from the center of the earth up through the feet and then up through um like the knees up to the first chakra and back down and then i'll continue doing that to help ground them like imagine um bringing the earth energy back down from the soles of the feet and back down into the center of the earth and then bringing it up to the second chakra and then grounding it out and down oh, and i really okay. find what this yeah like it, yeah yeah so so it's actually like it's actually grounding you to the center of the earth through the chakras as well, especially, mm -hmm. especially when you uh, got a lot of energy <laughs> and you're not grounded and things. It's so important to do things like that. Yeah, and then it I find take long. no, it doesn't take long at all. Yeah. And I found that the quicker the things are, the better it is because sometimes you know children don't want to sit still. <laughs> I do not especially <laughs> <laughs> if they got ADHD or things like that or even autism too like they just some don't sit still <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah do you think um that the children have a, a, a really good ability of the visualization for that process because I mean visualizing yeah. is really important you know people that have never mm -hmm. done that kind of grounding before will be like what do you mean the center of the earth like this person's nuts yeah you know you've got to really <laughs> practice <laughs> where you put your intention like moving your attention um are kids do kids pick this up pretty quick they like that, that you found oh, gosh, or, yeah they're, they're in it they're in that like, tell me more and i'm just like okay right. <laughs> yeah yeah i can imagine them wanting to know so what exactly does it look like down there and i know that, exactly. and why is it red and what, yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah i don't talk about the color because otherwise you know they'll go into why it should be like this oh you so don't mention the color okay sure. <laughs> that's a good tip i like that too many questions just concentrate yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah because that's when i know some of them do that it's like well why do we have to do that why can't we do that i'm just like okay it doesn't matter if you don't close your eyes just keeping yourself calm even if you don't close your eyes yeah. and not have to talk because a lot of those guys have got very active like um minds and brains which is great and they're very visual a lot of them too yeah i'd say one of their strengths as well and, and maybe non and, so they don't want to talk about it they're just listening exactly yeah. exactly exactly so i find that really you know grounding their energy and and i i can also read their energy too a lot i think I wish 
you know, I think that's so important being able to read people's energy. You know, we can read other people's like adults, but it's really important to be able to read other children's energy too you're working with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something that you've had growing up. Um, A Mm -hmm. lot of people probably wouldn't be able to relate to that, being able to to see or feel that energy. Do you think at a certain age um, that kind of conditioning and being told what's real and what's not, Mm -hmm. um, we lose Mm -hmm. that uh, ability? Or is it something that some people are just more... I just think some people more inclined that way naturally anyway, but I think a lot of people, if they haven't in an environment which is open to it, can start um, losing it and closing it down maybe about seven, eight, when they get into school and, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends if, yeah, some, I know that with children who see spirits and things like that, um, Mm -hmm. they might go off to tell their parent about it and just because the parent doesn't see or whatever that in their bedroom or whatever that they're talking about, they go, it's just your imagination, don't worry, go to sleep because it's quicker Mm -hmm. to answer rather than, that's if they knew about spirits or um guides and things like that they might be able to educate them on oh, okay well just um if it makes you uncomfortable you can ask them to leave or just say hi or you know mm-hmm. um, and honor it rather than then they might think it's just their imagination they grow out of it so yeah i understand what you mean by the environment yeah. so sometimes i'm that's i help um parents with understanding it so they can nurture their children and rather than thinking it's just their imagination exactly i think that's why things need to change that so- yeah. You know, it's part of us, these aspects and connecting to our spirituality and connecting to the earth and energy. We're made of energy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's actually a very good scientific explanation of what we are, as well as a great kind of spiritual explanation yeah. of what we are. Like yeah. that's where yeah. probably science yeah. and spirituality will actually agree. Mm-hmm. It's interesting yeah. how some people that probably don't really think about that, um, um, their energy or seeing others' energy or being in touch with that, they were exposed to you coming into a room and going, what the <laughs> hell's going on? So they're exposed <laughs> to the outcome is that... Yep. It is real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you do put off an energy, and if you're focused on it, it's obviously a good one that people are attached oh, to. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Love yeah, it. <laughs> it is the en- yeah. No, it is the energy thing, though. Like, I mean, teaching Reiki since 1999 for like 23 years too. So that is also increased my sensitivity, like on all levels as well. Because mm-hmm. I've also been sensitive ever since a child, but then when I started teaching it, every time I teach it, it's like I become more sensitive <laughs> and I become like, oh, I get all the senses. So I see everything, I can hear it, I can, I can aesthetically all of the levels. So, oh, I, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think doing the Reiki has done that, you know, like, which is a gift. And, it, and but it's, I mean, it's taken me a long time to be able to accept it as a blessing. It's like sometimes the sensitivity that goes along with that is just like overwhelming. So sometimes, you know, I'm just in a situation, people say, oh, you can see that as a dear, but I, why don't you do it all the time? I say, well, if I did that all the time, you have to be able to discern and not have to be in that space. You know, it's been a, a real learning so how, how have you taught yourself then to be able to not see things and not be so sensitive all the time? How have you switched off? Because I know that's an issue with people. They get a bit worried that they won't be able to switch it off, especially empaths. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, uh, yeah, um, it's not that I switch I'm just like, I'm aware of it. Yeah. I acknowledge it and I'm aware of it. And then I'm like, okay, it's just like, yeah, and not, it's, it's coming now to like an acceptance like okay no problem i seeing it i don't need to Focus. play into that okay. yeah i just yeah. i just acknowledging it i'm like okay no problem i see this and this is happening and, but it's just like accepting it and and just allowing it to just pass through me and just like okay no problem i don't need so, to react to that so mm-hmm. you're not you're not trying to engage with it around you all the time you're just you're in it and it is is has grounding got something to do with that as well yes it does do you find you need to do a lot of grounding with that yeah 
I think the grounding really helps with that because like when I'm doing seeing sessions or doing clients with sessions I can like be completely connected and open and like just let it all go but then I found that being the grounding really helps with that too so you can go shopping as well (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can yeah, do that just... and then you can go shopping <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> too, so we yeah. don't find you in the corner stroking an avocado saying you've had a beautiful life you know, like with the energy yeah <laughs> <laughs> i can somehow that's imagine her doing that that's quite yeah. <laughs> i don't know the spiritual life of avocados i'll be honest uh, I, don't. I just Why know avocado? that they're very expensive so random. They're, they're quite expensive i don't know they're that's cute. funny <laughs> and something I'm really interested in, and I'd like to go back to um, some of the healing mm-hmm. modalities because they're really interesting um, mm-hmm. and probably why you're on the show anyway. <laughs> and your book. <laughs> but when you're growing up, um, mm-hmm. with the energies and things that you were, you were seeing and you were seeing beings, um, what sort of household did you grow up in where, like, was that accepted? I know you're saying your dad was a bit psychic. Was that something that was really accepted? Mm-hmm. Or was that something where they were concerned that your imagination was running away from yourself? What What was it like growing mm-hmm. up seeing stuff? I didn't really talk about it much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nervous that yeah. You, it would be kind of squashed down? Or... Yeah, yeah. Because I think we were both up like strict Christians. We went yep. to church. Yep. And oh, even, then... was psychic. Wow. Hmm? even though your dad was psychic you said mm-hmm. so he didn't did he push it down too then mm-hmm. uh-huh. yeah and my mom too i think wow. my mom was pretty psychic too i think we all are in our family but <laughs> i was the one who sort of went into healing and things because um what happened was like my mom got like cancer when she was in her 40s and then I looked after her and then my dad died when he was 62 and then my mum died like 2015 so I wanted to go on a path that um I, I felt like it was my turn to sort of go on the healing path and deal with a lot of stuff and things so yeah that's why I did the Reiki and I've always seen things and you know when I got confirmed in one of the churches I started speaking in tongues and so it was just oh. <laughs> yeah um so yeah so but it wasn't it's always been a part of me the spirituality yeah but I just feel now it's like I I do a lot of healing on myself and I like to share a lot of healing because it's like healing things that I went through as a child too and just, yeah. So what when you said you were seeing things or more, I'm more curious now about yours, mm-hmm. when you got confirmed, so through confirmation you started speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. How did that, like, um, how was your reaction to that? What did people do? Did that happen as soon as you got confirmed in church? Like, yeah so basically I got but no it was in the um I think it was in I got christened in like um confirmed in the church of England then when I went into Pentecostal I started speaking tongues and then somebody actually was able to uh interpret what I said but I can't remember what it was yeah it was like an ancient language I was speaking wow yeah that's because that's that's funny that some things I guess, particularly in the Christian faith, some things are quite accepted and some things aren't, which is interesting considering mm-hmm. that Jesus was a psychic, clairvoyant, uh, mystery schools, energy healer <laughs> that, raised, now, that raised the dead. Um, <laughs> <I don't. laughs> so um, yeah. if you have any of those, though, you know, anyway. Um, yeah, only so, allowed to. Some, some, things, <laughs> some things were quite... Um, some some things were quite accepted. So when they're speaking in tongues, well, being I, I guess at least being at a Pentecostal church, yeah, over a Church it of England, different. it's going to be a bit yeah. more accepting of the yeah. spiritual yeah. side of things. Um, yeah, and it's seen as a spiritual gift anyway, speaking in tongues. Um, so oh. it's I guess a bit more acceptable. Um, like in the old Jewish texts, it's like oh, that's a spiritual gift, as well as discern, discerning. Um, speaking in tongues so if you have two of those in the same room how exciting for that church you're speaking in tongues and someone's got the spiritual gift of understanding what that was it's genius um I so know, that, eh? that one's more acceptable from there did you 
feel a little bit more free even just by yourself to explore a little bit more about yeah. the energy stuff yeah yeah wow i really got into it like in 1994 i started reiki level one mm -hmm. and that's when um i really opened up and connected more to the spiritual stuff too because i found the church i love going to tours but it wasn't mm -hmm. um i found it very um I didn't like to be told what to do. It's like, you've got Jesus is outside of you and this is outside of you. And, yeah. you know, it was like... More rigid, <laughs> not open. -minded. Yeah, it was more rigid and things. So, I mean, I went to church, as you know, up until I was 18 and things. And I went to like Sunday school and things. But And then I went to Pentecostal for a couple of years and then I left. But yeah, then in 1994, I studied Reiki and that was that we acquainted me on my own journey but an internal journey it wasn't mm. like an external connection to like the church of england or anything like that it was like being able to have my own connection to myself and learning to go within again mm -hmm. wow wow mm -hmm. amazing so that's there's been Thank quite you. the journey that energetic and spiritual mm -hmm. journey um mm -hmm. through the church but a lot of mm -hmm. it happening outside did jesus give you any messages when you were a kid like to help you with this like <laughs> that's pretty out there like um do you remember that or do you just remember well, you saw jesus or do I, you not want to talk about it <laughs> that's okay no i can't yeah no that's okay i mean i um i remember seeing them in blue and things too and archangel michael blue. as well okay yeah <laughs> wow i so can't it's... remember yeah has any of that come they back the, to you, like um, like Michael or anything like that? My husband has a very strong connection to Archangel Michael. He took right. photos of him in the one of the British Museum, mm -hmm. right. and we saw the energy of him come through it. So yeah. we both have a strong connection with him. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. are going to say, oh, you took a photo of him. Was he just walking through the streets? Can you explain <laughs> what you mean by took a photo of him? <laughs> and if we That's interview funny. something, we might have to do a screen so you can show us some photos. And things. You can't just have throw away comments. I'm husband. sorry, you can't. <laughs> yeah, you can't just throw need to away. elaborate. Yeah, what? Michael. So, but my husband could tell you about that another time. But basically, one, one year when we went to England, it was like 1998, and we went to I think the London Victoria Museum. And then there was a picture of a statue of Archangel Michael. And then, or a picture of him. And then my husband took a picture and then there was no light in, in there. But then when we saw the light, when we uh, processed the, the film afterwards, he saw a blue light coming out. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is so that we similar? Have base no, you go. Sorry. We both have a very strong connection to him. Mm -hmm. Is anyone named Michael in your family? Yes, my dad. Mm. I was going to say, because this, Mick, um, so from what I've been shown is if you're named Michael, you're more likely to have him as your main angel. Um, really? Or, or Michelle. Because it's, my it's, middle it's name is Michaela too. Michaela. <laughs> there yeah, you go. <laughs> So it sort of carries through that might might likely be. I just I just remember hearing that, and then I got confirmed with a channel message for someone before. So I was just curious to wow. see. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> even think about that. <laughs> Here you go. Wow. Thank you. It's just a really interesting. Like it's just that it will be more likely to be your. There's just a connection there because names vibe have vibrations and numbers and all that too. So you're bringing. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you. Very good. I feel something, I feel good now. Yeah, good. <laughs> and Mich Michaela is a little bit more like Michael anyway, which is yeah, yeah, yeah really exactly. is not, not the Western Michelle, yeah. Michael. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. You go, Michael, you might need to connect with your um, version of Michael. <laughs> yeah, sure. No exactly. I just thought, okay, he's just walking past. I just took a photo earlier. <laughs> because um, we can just say that now and we'll all accept it. Um yeah. <laughs> it's interesting you talk about um, the blue energy kind of with, mm. with Michael. You mm. talk about seeing energies. Do you see those in colours? And is that mm -hmm. like a, a – what, what do you see with colours? So when, you, when you're seeing energies or sensing them, um, can you describe Except, it? Yeah. So basically um, I can see colours in the aura and thing. And then when I'm working with the body talk and doing sessions in the body – 
I see um I, I see all the colors in the organs, the endocrines and everything. And I can see like, different parts of the body and things. Because with body talk, it's a combination of osteopathic, chiropractic, Vedic, Chinese medicine and Western medicine. So I'm still studying years later, even though I started studying in 2004, I became certified. Wow. So it goes into all these really deep levels, which I really love because and now and then I'm studying the brain and how the Vedic influences the brain and like and then as I studied it more and more and more, I become more aware and the body shows up in all different colours and things. And yeah. Do you see that all of the time or only while you're doing the work? Mm -hmm. I, I just do it. I make I just allow myself to do that when I'm doing the work. <laughs> Otherwise it gets too overwhelming because it's like, I'll be outside and it's just like, okay. And sometimes when I'm communicating with the um, children on the spectrum yeah. and I, they can see things too, they're very psychic. Um, and I can just send a message to them like a ball or, you know, a color or something and they'll, you know. <laughs> wow. So you can communicate oh, yeah. on that level also. Oh yeah. On the yeah. telepathic level with them, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, a good question from before and now a new question. Um, <laughs> hang on. So, so when you say you see the colours, um, some people who are struggling with um, learning about the visualisations and intuition in the third eye, when you say see, do you see with your actual eyes or are you seeing it in here, in your third eye? In my third eye. Yep. That's how I see. Okay. So some people, yeah. they expect, when we say I see, they expect that you can see it like every other color or anything else that you see within physical eyes so it's great to hear so somebody else as well that actually see when we see it it's in our mind's eye so they understand that they're not doing exactly. it wrong exactly exactly yeah exactly. you're seeing it in your head but it's still accurate yeah 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 that's good yeah thank you for clarifying yeah you're okay. <laughs> sure you have a question me I oh, do. I just don't want to jump in and and. I'm not going to hold the question. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think yeah. it's a, it's a really nice way to. Um, kind of segment into this this body talk yes. um healing that you do i've never heard of it before um are he you was an australian explain? guy who uh created it john belltime right okay no. no yeah no he's <laughs> Should have, he, i guess <laughs> i know hey he was um he was from brisbane yeah in and i think he created this in 19 no two gosh i'm losing track of that and when was it now early like late 90s he created this and it's um he was an acupuncturist by trade he was also a chiropractor he's also a naturopath he's also a reiki master and he also like specialized in all these different modalities like he studied chiropractor naturopaths he studied um acupuncture chinese medicine wow. he um he studied the uh, Vedic principles and India and so through so all of his studies over the years he created the body talk system and it's I find it one fascinating like because it's one of the, the main things for me that has actually brought me into my body too I think more grounded in myself too mm. um, so basically the belief is that your body has an innate healing ability to heal itself and using muscle testing and connecting to the body's innate wisdom to find out where the imbalances are. And I'm always asking your body what the priority is at that present moment of time. Because um, your body knows it stores everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So basically, I've studied all like the basic levels. And I also teach a one day course, a body talk access course through him as well. And then um, I've studied i'm studying parama level unit one which is like all about the brain and how all the brain functions and i studied the body ecology the microbiome and then the more you study it like i've been taking courses since 2004 18 years um yeah <laughs> so all this knowledge nice is like yeah it's non-stop and it always evolves too so what happens too that opens you up to on a different psychic level like your internal 
you see things differently. Like I'm able to look at organs and the endocrines and go, you learn all these charts and everything. And then I'm also learning them. Like I, like my last course I was taking was on hormones and neurotransmitters and now I'm taking epigenetics. So it goes to all different levels all the time. So wow. you're more aware of what you're looking at from the psychic Ex level as well. So you can exactly. work with it more because you're learning more. Mobilize it as at. well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, happens, exactly. It sounds very similar to like kinesiology sort of mm. thing. What happens in that body talk? What? Yeah, it's using the key muscle testing. Yep. And yeah, to find out where the imbalances are. Okay. Because what it does, um, and it gets to the root causes by behind the imbalances in all levels. So physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, it goes to it can work at every level. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and then, then what do you do, yeah. 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 What do you do then when you know what it is, where you've located? And so how do you what can you do? So I I when I'm working with clients and things, you know, it's they may say, Oh, I got like um um hormone issues were coming up for them and i'd ask their body and i thought i know all the um i've learned all the charts and everything and then i say okay do you need to go here 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 and i'm always always using the muscle testing even though i can see it in them i'm mm. still following the whole protocol and everything as well as i see it as well but then I'm like, okay, so we're going to organs and degrees and then we're going into like, I'm always asking their body, like pineal pituitary and then going more specifically into pituitary and it could be like in seeing the third mm -hmm. eye could be conscious. It could be related to like um, hormones, neurotransmitters. Like that's why I like body talks. It's like, it's such an in-depth system, like mm -hmm. really deep. Like it, when, I, you, you know, mm -hmm. when you're muscle testing, so are you touching different parts and then like holding someone's arm or what, yes. what is it that you're doing? Mm -hmm. So basically if I'm doing an in-person session, I'm using the arm. Okay. Yep. Into the wrist muscle test. Show me yes, show me no. And then okay. I'll ask the body what the priority is. And so I follow the charts, what I've learned. And I'm always uh -huh. asking the person's body what the priority is. And how does the body respond? Oh, I feel <clears throat> so when the body responds, it feels like I can feel, yes, it, it feels like, um, show me, yes, show me, you know, instead of doing that, it's just using, I can feel, yes, is like, um, it doesn't feel so tense and the no feels tense in the muscles here. Okay. And then in I the can wrist. go. Mm -hmm. Oh, it could be anywhere. Like sometimes I work with people in wheelchairs and I can't use the wrist, so I use something else. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So can you do this online? Can you do this online as well? Or oh, oh yeah. I, I yeah. Wrist? Can be done online as well. I use a teddy bear to uh, do the session. <laughs> oh what? I have a long teddy bear. <laughs> you have a teddy bear that you you imagine is the is a client. Exactly. I use the teddy bear to surrogate. Goes I love that. Also. So you've got like yeah. a, a, let's let's be honest, because you're making it a teddy bear so that it's nice and friendly, but you're using a voodoo doll. Let's be honest. Like, come on. That's <laughs> a voodoo doll. It's it just like a terrible. friendly voodoo doll. It's a beautiful energy. No, no but is it is it is it similar? Is it similar to like Concept, yes. to that though? You know. Okay. Show <laughs> us that yes, 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 we're gonna see the teddy bear. I wanna know what I look like if I get an online session. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's got my size nose. That's okay, I'm, I'm about as squishy. Yep, that's good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> wow. So, so, how do you get them to do the muscle test? Do you have to visual? Is it this kind of muscle test or something when you do the? Mm -hmm. So you can. See I it? use the. Yeah, just using. So on not the, that kind, but yeah, on the wrist. When it's online, I, how do you, how do you do the muscle test? So I use the teddy bears, the surrogate for the person. Even for the muscle test, mm -hmm. oh, I could do the whole thing. Wow! How did yeah, you... awesome. Mm -hmm. People are going. Wow. How, this is, how this can is so that incredible. Bear be me? So it, it's. I want to do the teddy bear. It's now, it's now <laughs> not a voodoo doll, Michael. It now sounds like Chucky. I know. It's all right. I'm sorry. It's alive. Yeah, I know. Because you can move and stuff like. Yeah. Okay. okay. How do you? 
for the people at home who are going, what are you talking about? How can you muscle test a teddy bear that is actually hey. to myself? How does that, mm-hmm. how does that work? So when I'm, okay, I could try. Do one of you want to be tried? Do one of you want to be <laughs> tried? Okay, yeah. it's, not, it's not fair using Xavier because she's psychic. Yeah, so people funny. will just yeah. go, oh, she psychically became the teddy bear. Right, right. That would be impressive okay. too, by the good, way. Good, good. That would be cool. Okay. But, yes, Michael would be great to demonstrate on. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. There's going to be Australians and people around yeah. listening to this. I want to know how they can have a session online and they're trying to mm-hmm. get around that they're a teddy bear. Ah, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, sorry. I'll take this seriously. Sorry, Chris. Should I turn my screen off or something? Or are you good? I'm okay. 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 Oh, okay, so but I'm just connecting. I'm intending to use the teddy bear okay. as a surrogate for Michael. Okay. Oh, getting tingles. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. There you are. Yeah. Anything? Yeah. <sighs> clearing stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if i'm allowed to talk i can tell people it feels like yeah sure got little twitches in my in my arms and you know, like around mm-hmm. my, my shoulders yeah you're there right now so i've used you as um a surrogate for the teddy bear Teddy bear is a surrogate for you, sir. There you go. Okay. But, okay. So I'm going to ask your body what the priority is. You need permissions. Spirit. Giving you permission, spirit level. There you go. All right. I'm upgrading to spirit level. This is good. <laughs> Going into organs and cards, <clears throat> liver, gallbladder, and stomach, spleen, spleen. Okay, going into the spleen. I'm asking your body this. Okay. It's giving me a yes, no. And then uh-huh. going into the spleen and consciousness of cleansing and letting go. <gasps> Looking over, I can see Xavier. Away <laughs> over there. She's, she's picking up on the vibes. Release. She's already doing stuff. She's picking up on the vibes. Chris is yawning, which is a big sign with energy healers when they're releasing yeah. stuff as well. Yeah. 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 So everyone listening, she's not bored. This is just like. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> they're like, wow, she I, hates I, her I job. Yeah. She hates I, her job. I yawn too when I'm clearing old stuff. Do you? Yeah. Mm. If it's old, it, I yawn. Yeah. That's funny. Mm-hmm. And then going into spleen apart, you know. Going into okay. body parts. Going into body parts. Head, shoulders, knees, mm-hmm. left knee. All right. There's a belief system in the left knee. Okay. And it's, uh, I am fearful of moving forward in life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> going to let that go? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ready to let that go. I'm ready to move forward. Mm-hmm. Knowing where some of those areas are even. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is just turned into a Michael Van session. This is great. <laughs> Excellent. That's interesting. When I was a kid, I used to have a whole lot of issues with my knee, like knee oh. injury. And, but I used to limp a lot at school. And it was always funny because really? my friends used to joke around. But I reckon I limped more than I needed to. Over, oh, wow. Mm. It's like a tension. That's interesting. I don't know. Which leg was it you were limping on? Yeah, it was the left. left. Yeah. Left. Yeah. yeah. That's why I bring it up. Too. It's like, oh, yeah, because, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> It's cool being attached to the teddy bear because I'm still like really twitchy. 
<laughs> it is like my arms are all twitchy, my fingers are a little mm-hmm. bit twitchy. Yeah. I hope she disconnects at the end as I well take you for a walk outside or give you a no, that'll be wondering fun. why you're wet all of a sudden. She's <laughs> throw me on the shelf. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, okay, going into wow. the new priority, you know. Okay. Stomach and the consciousness of digestion and assimilation of life. Okay. Okay. I was thinking I I needed more sit ups, but (laughs) yep. Okay. (laughs) Okay. It's coming up as end of session. All right, there we go. Thank you very much. Wow. Hey, you're so welcome. There you go. There's I'm a just gonna, live session. I'm just, just going to let you go from, from the, the teddy bear. There you okay. Go. Oh, right. I felt that. That was weird. <laughs> oh, that's cool. We connected. Wow, that's weird. I'm not twitching anymore. I, I no. seriously, like, because I would say yeah. if I didn't feel, feel the anything. Yeah. Um, my, my arms <laughs> were, thank you, teddy bear. Thank you, Teddy Bear. Um, and thank you, Chris. That's lovely. Yeah, um, you're welcome. My arms are like below my armpits and my arms and everything mm-hmm. like really twitchy the whole time and through the fingers. Wow, so I'm glad you could feel that's that. That's really interesting. Yeah. 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 So you moved from his knee, you cleared that, and then you did something with his stomach? Just the, um, it came up as the consciousness of digestion and assimilation. I'm working on the spleen as well came up. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. Oh, that's good. Beautiful. Thank you. That's very. Um, Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah, you're welcome. Generous of you to, yeah. to people understand what it's like. That's yeah, no problem. <laughs> that is so I interesting. I know it sounds. Mm-hmm. To to just do that, I'd like to be able to do that online and do it through. So when you're doing it through the teddy bear, what are you experiencing when you're holding the the bear yeah. or the surrogate? I should say. So basically, it's like it's. This is your body, and then I'm asking you, okay, where are the imbalances? Uh-huh. And then it was coming up as like the knee, the spleen, and the stomach. And so, mm-hmm. was intuitively guiding you to that? Were you no, your body was. Your body knows. Okay. Your body, because anything that you've been through and you haven't processed down, it's sort yeah. of stored in there. So, and that could be like things from childhood or emotions and memories active memories <laughs> it could be anything yeah so if you haven't like um processed it and simulated it in the stomach then it sort of hangs out in here too <laughs> okay yeah yeah wow. so am i vegetarian now what what am i assimilating <laughs> yeah. to food i don't know did you just give him abs and he doesn't have to do sit-ups after all <laughs> No. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's so interesting. So um yeah. so you 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 said that um you had used body talk on yourself before. Um was that something that cleared something really obvious for you that made you think, wow, there's more in this? Um and was that after you're already a Reiki practitioner? So I was um became a Reiki master teacher in 1999, so I took all the levels. And then yep. after that, we were in Calgary, and then um, I had really bad allergies and digestive issues, and I tried a lot of different things and didn't really clear them up. And then somebody said, try body talk, and that was in 2002. Wow. And I found a practitioner in Calgary, and... It was really the only thing that was able to sort of um, get to the root causes behind all of those things. And I haven't had any issues with them since. Wow. So it's pretty, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, I mean, it's ongoing clearing with the digestive thing. Everybody has things with the digestion, but um, I used to have irritable bowel and things. So wow. it was able to like clear childhood stuff and trauma and whatever goes on in your life you can just bring it out and clear it up and yeah I was so just I know about it to ask that. that's fantastic I was just about to ask are you holding space for it to be healed and cleared 
or um, are you um, giving or both? Are you giving them advice about different foods or supplements and things to take to help? No, no. no. okay. No, it's more of when I'm doing the body talk session. It's like uh, it's it's I'm not giving advice. I'm just asking the body, like uh, working on the energy levels mm -hmm. and the psychic level and the mental levels. But it's not saying, or oh, you should be eating that, or should be eat or that. It's like just working to release the body so it can get back right. into balance and communication. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. so the body's talking <laughs> That's what yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah, very, the makes sense. Yeah. just dropped it just That's clicked funny. for me too when you said that <laughs> <laughs> wow right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so um coming to um like you obviously you know, writing your book as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. childhood mm -hmm. autism was it insights into their mysterious world. Mm -hmm. Amazing. What got you Thank then you. from that point into um, working with autism? Oh, well, Can you repeat the question gone. again, sir? What, what, what got you to the um, starting to work with children and, and people, children with autism? Mm -hmm. Oh, I... My first experience, thank you, uh, was when I was 18, no, 17. And I was volunteering in a, a hospital, like this really severe children's hospital in England, in Nottingham, because I'm from England. Mm -hmm. And I, a lot of the children there were like nonverbal, uh, probably like teenagers too, like 18, 19, 20. And they were attached to the hospital, but they were like in the residential part. Mm -hmm. And they were very severe. Most of them were nonverbal. Most of them were diapers. Most of them were mm. like had severe behaviors. Mm. Um, and they, some of them like ran off and, you know, flooded the bathroom. You know? And I'm like, wow, who are these people? <laughs> and I found that fascinating for some reason. Like, and I was only 18 and I was volunteering because I wanted yeah. to get, yeah, right. And I'm, yeah. And I'm like, what's so wrong with these guys? Yeah. And then I realized that, you know, people said that these kiddies, like, well, teenagers and older um, ones were on the autism spectrum, but nonverbal and they're very severe. Mm. You know, the very, the very, you know, some of them have better communication and, you know, can speak with you and things. A lot of those guys I, I met years ago were like nonverbal, you know, diapers, need to be fed in wheelchairs, you know, so real at the other end of the spectrum, because mm. you can have the very chatty, verbal, um, like lively children on the autism spectrum can have the other ones too and you know can't communicate can't talk can't eat can't this can't that and you know there's everything in between as well so these mm. guys when I first did like 17 18 were like severe at the other end very low functioning couldn't do anything for themselves and then I'm like wow I really I think that was really the beginning of my connection with them like wow who are these people I was curious and then I went to study the NNEB in England for two years, um, nurse for nursing. And then when I came over to Canada, I, I really found, like I started nannying with some and then I worked in um, different centers in Calgary with the autistic kiddies. And so learning about them over the years and then um, I was just fascinated by them because they were so different. Have yeah. you noticed, and, sorry. Um, have you noticed yeah. the work you're doing with them? Mm -hmm. um, have you what's have you got a story about like a favorite improvement that you've noticed over time, whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual? Mm -hmm. um, what kind of results do you see or changes do you see with the children and teams that you work with? Mm -hmm. um, there was a couple of teens I've been working with um, doing sessions and things and one of, them, one of them was um, having quite a few behavior issues and things and then um, wasn't able to focus and also having some issues with the toe. Because what I also found is a lot of the children on the autism spectrum actually had tummy issues and not yeah. grounded in here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Makes sense, yeah. Yep. They have um, 
I, what I found too is a lot of them have intolerances or gluten intolerances and things going on in here. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was one, um, one in particular I was working with and it came up for a lot of like working on allergies and intolerances and active memories and things. And also what came up too was um, one time in a life he hadn't come, the planet he came from, he was still, so his soul was up there and they had to sort of bring his soul back into it. You can do with body talk to um, working on the matrix level and bringing different aspects to of your soul mm-hmm. into. So um, I did that and then for months before that he wasn't speaking and then after having that, he started to be able to like, bring himself back in because he was getting more of himself back to him so yeah, <laughs> to him. More into his body because you said he's yeah exactly still up connected exactly. to the planet and not completely so for those listening who we might have brought this up before um our whole soul couldn't fit in our physical body we'd probably explode we couldn't handle it mm. so parts of our soul slithers that's why you can have <laughs> more than one life happening at a time and so maybe mm. he was sort of floating above it did you sense any of his soul in his body or was he just functioning a little bit? A yeah. Little bit. yeah. So you just needed to bring more of it in. That's yeah, great. more yeah. anchoring gain to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the body talk, you could do that too. Like there's um techniques you can do at the um, <laughs> the events. I've always where you can learn, you know, bring more of your aspects into yourself and into your heart and you know, integrate more into you. So that's why I really like body talk in that sense that it you know, it brings you into these physical aspects, you know, I've had to work a lot and learn a lot as I go along like oh, oh yeah. that's really cool like I'm always learning every day like every day I'm always learning something yeah new and-, and every client's <laughs> going to be different like and it's kind yeah. of their, their lessons I would think is um for them to be able to they, or their parents or themselves to be able to drawn to the right practitioner to help them be in more mm-hmm. in their body so they can settle mm-hmm. in, in this life to learn their lessons and that might be part of their lessons and their journey is to figure out how yes. to integrate with the body that they chose um, so yes okay. yeah that's such a big issue for them mm-hmm. Can be very mm-hmm. so it's I'm sure a lot of people will be more open-minded and open-hearted when they think about children on the spectrum and all different kinds of levels and how yeah. it can be such yeah. a hard like a challenge for them to learn how to live here and so having that compassion for them and understanding um is really totally and, and also like <laughs> sorry go okay. yeah with the behaviors too I mean it's there's always a reason I truly believe that it's not children not being misbehaving. There's a reason why there's a behavior, right? They're trying to communicate something. And yes. do you know what I mean? Like, some, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I have a meltdown and this and that. And I'm like, well, there's a reason why. Have you tried communicating with them, asking what the need is? Or, mm. I mean, that's the thing is a lot of this time you can't communicate with them because some of them don't have that verbal. Um, where they don't have the language capacity a lot of those guys right? and mm. do you know what I mean and that causes a lot of frustration even mm. for like ADHD kiddies and things yeah. which you know, must like be sh- like a, a wonderful thing for you to be able to come in and they can mm-hmm. have some kind of communication whether they're consciously aware of what's happening or not there's some communication going on an mm-hmm. energetic level that yeah, exactly. isn't able to happen or is frustrating to do in the normal communication yeah. that we do. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. So your book could be helping parents as well to understand. Oh, oh totally. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I talk about like um, things that I used over the years in the school wars and things and also work. I taught Reiki and going through different things I do with them, with the autistic children. And, you know, they're very receptive, those children, very open. And I think sometimes, People have judged them so much when they're having a meltdown. They think, oh, look at that bad child. It's like, no. You know, it's just a behavior. It's just they're, they're, they're trying to express themselves. And my biggest yeah, takeaway, so- sorry, my, my biggest takeaway from everything you're saying is that we should focus on what works with these children and what's yeah. wonderful about them, not, yeah. what, not what is hard. Because Yeah, exactly. Because they've got so many beautiful talents, mm. and skills, and things. You, you sometimes are harder to see when you're just focusing on what the problems are and what exactly. the disruptive behaviors. But there's so much exactly. 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly what it is. It's like everything's energy and everything's communication. And, you know, it's like, um, no, I, I mean, I've been very blessed. And I'm really grateful for the connection and learning from those guys. It's uh, such a gift to be able to do that and be with them and, and learn from parents. them. And yeah, exactly. You'd be learning so much because mm. good and our biggest teachers. <laughs> um, oh. And the parents mm. learning to be grounded and centered and calm as well to hold space. Well, that's the you. thing is, I, yeah, yeah, that's a half the problem is that yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> those guys are, are super sensitive like we all are right and yeah. and it's like they they more than others pick up on anything out of balance anyone any energy <laughs> if you're not grounded if you're out to sink if you're this if you're that and you know it's just like it's so important for yourself to be grounded <laughs> yeah. and so putting calm. yourself first as a parent to make sure yeah. you have your all shit together for one of a better way. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and you, you know, you put yourself first so you can be the best because then your energy is if they're extra sensitive and receptive to your yeah. energy, you're having a bad day, they're gonna have a bad day, and then your day is gonna get worse and it just keeps spiraling out of control. Entropy, exactly. right? I mean, we're exactly. talking about energy. Um, entropy yeah. is the same thing, whether you're talking about um, the energy we have like in our, in our cells or bodies or mm-hmm. whether it's a closed circuit in an energy loop in the house, like yeah. it will happen. It's, it's open a cycle, door and let it out, I think. Like I can just imagine. <laughs> Sage, open a door. What do you all have? I don't know that the wind can really push it around. I'm not sure. No. Have the intention that it's going out the door and it will. That, that so might happen. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it's in the intention yeah cool okay um with with um your workshops that you do with um Mm -hmm. kind of stress reduction and a lot of that grounding stuff Mm -hmm. do you do Mm -hmm. that with um families of people with autism as well as the autistic child is that is that something yeah yeah, okay because that just makes a lot of sense now yeah yeah because there's more need of it now than ever before Mm -hmm. and especially like with all the all the uh stuff Mm -hmm. that's been happening in the world Mm -hmm. um like people are more anxious and children anxious families are anxious and they pick up on all that stuff and it's just like Mm -hmm. yeah we all need of the planet the children be picking up on just every the collective energy not just yeah exactly yeah 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 Yeah. and it's yeah exactly because there's a lot going on out there so Mm -hmm. yeah they're very psychically aware and picking up on it all and yeah so we can keep ourselves as much as we can i mean we're still human right? <laughs> exactly we, exactly precisely. yeah you have yeah to exactly. that sometimes and do normal human things <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, exactly I've, i don't know if my head's been in the sand or not but um clearly if my head was in the sand i wouldn't know anyway um <laughs> with with working with people with 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 children and and young adults with autism are there, are there many books or much information out there on like a energetic or spiritual level? Because I feel Not like many I haven't at seen all. much at I all. Wish you no. wrote it. Yeah. Um, I know. I think there really was one. Yeah, there's maybe one person, an autistic person, wrote about the spiritual okay. connection to it years ago, but nothing like. It then no one's really spoken about that aspect of it yeah. as much as yeah, yeah yeah but it's a massive massive um important part of the picture right? like it's a big part yeah, of the exactly. picture that perhaps we're missing because yeah. we're so yeah. concerned around the practical details of things and yeah. not really connecting yeah. on what this means from a spiritual or energetic yeah. level or however energetic you understand level. it yeah yeah um, I think this is a really important book for anyone who has family members or knows people with kids with Thank autism, you. just for the families yeah. to be able not to just read autism, and share. The whole spectrum. Well, the spectrum, yeah. yeah like yeah. if you've got a yeah. kid Asperger's that's different. Do you know ADHD. what I mean? Like ADHD. Yeah. 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 Because it goes through mindfulness too, like um, breathing exercises and Reiki and, Beautiful. you know, like talking about the energy and how those guys see everything, right? And like, like it was such a gift. Have. Yeah, I can see mm-hmm. everyone wanting to have it in their back pocket, keep it handy to refer to. Mm. I want a copy. Thank you. Um, thank you for for tuning in to the, probably the main reason that you're here on this, that you're here, Chris, on this planet um, at the moment to be of service 
to so many people and children. You're just an angel thank in a body. You. Um, mm. Really appreciate thank it. You. I just wanted to say thank you for he heeding the call and um, going to do what you. you're to because not everybody goes with their intuition and the flow of what you know following the signs of what you joined you've done the courses and you've learned your lessons and you've moved countries and everything just all the different things you've been guided to do you've done for your path thank um, you and you yeah just, okay. it's, it's beautiful thank yeah. you oh <laughs> you're the most <laughs> you mean to make you cry <laughs> beautiful there's so much love and yeah we're just very proud because um it's a, it's a really big deal. And, and so people that are listening, especially overseas from you, um, that would love to connect with you online, have a one-on-one -on -one session, like that one day body talk, like how do, how do people find you and connect with you before we wrap it Yay. up? Um, <laughs> Not that I want to wrap it up. <laughs> no, I know, but we have to at some stage. Okay. <laughs> okay. So my, um, you can get me, you can connect, connect with me by email. Mm -hmm. And it's cress08 at gmail.com or www.infinitebodytalk.org. I can send you the information to us. We'll have it in the show notes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So people will see it. So if you're watching or you're listening, scroll down and yep. the show okay. notes will be there to contact. So important. And Sounds also good, yeah. the link to your book, you can get that on Amazon, I presume. Yes, and... you can, Amazon. Yeah. We'll have that link in there too. And we can find you on Thank LinkedIn. You. Speaking of links. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. the book childhood autism insights into their mysterious world just sounds mm. like a necessity for so many people to have so yeah thank you beautiful beautiful thank you very thank much you. again for coming and we thank really you. appreciate everything yeah. you do and the beautiful chat we've had you're a gorgeous energy thank you thank you so much thank you that's it for another episode but that doesn't have to be the end of the conversation Feel free to leave your comments on our YouTube channel or for those podcast listeners, you can email us at mickandthepsychic at gmail.com to leave your feedback or questions. I'm a certified hypnotherapist and timeline regression therapist. If you wish to contact me to explore the source of an issue you're facing, just book a session at hernhypnosis.com.au and include the promo code MATP for 10% off. You can contact me on Insta and Facebook at Hearn Hypnosis. Check out my website at optimisticxavier.com.au if you feel you'd like to connect with me as a psychic medium, spiritual mentor or intuitive coach. Include the promo code MATP for 10% discount. You can also find me on Insta, LinkedIn and Facebook. We look forward to connecting with you again next time as we attempt to leave no stone unturned. Bye. All right, cool. I reckon that should be okay.